All right, so we set up a variety of basic options for the store. Now let's actually deal with products in a store. If you click on products on the left side menu, all products that currently exist will show up there, which is zero. We'll add one in a moment. But I first want to mention categories, categories and tags. So with products, we have categories and tags. It's up to you to decide which of the two, or both, you want to use. A category is the largest organizational unit of something, is the big idea. A tag is the small detail. Here's an example. So, category, cakes, cookies, pies, bread. Those are the big ideas of what I'm selling. Well, inside of cakes, I'm going to sell birthday cakes, chocolate cake, vanilla cake. So the details are chocolate or the tag is uh, chocolate, vanilla, pecan, pecan pie, pecan bread, whatever. So you see the idea here, one might be enough for you, or you might need both. And what's confusing is that you can sort of define one as the other. It would still make sense. I would still want a category of chocolate or a category of vanilla, depending on what you're trying to do. So I would sort of recommend, for most of you, you, you can just focus on categories. But if you need a lot of detail, a lot of organization, a lot of power to be able to uh, sort your products and such, you would do both. So if only using one, the shop should still work well if using both it gives you more control and or organizational ability so we'll start with category let's go to the categories screen under products uh, if you've got your own site uh, your own copy of the site obviously you can make up whatever you want here but I'm working with Victor's Bakery so I'll do what I'm talking about right now I've got a name what should I name my category slug will automatically fill itself in based on what I wrote in name so don't worry about that is there a parent category and here it gives you the example of um, for, for more hierarchy more organization you might have the parent category of jazz and then you would have bebop and big band. So those are two types of jazz. They're part of the parent category of jazz. They're, it's optional that it was that detailed, but for more organization and searching and such, that's a, a reason to do that. Cakes. This should be written as it will be visible to the user. Slug will automatically fill itself in, and it's just going to be the same thing that you typed, but lowercase. And if I wanted to call this Tasty Cakes, it would automatically call itself here Tasty-Cakes. Any spaces will become dashes, so don't worry about the slug. Where does the slug show up on the side? It's going to show up in the address. If I'm looking at the category, so just to show something like this, shop slash categories slash Tasty Cakes, it'll look like that. So it'll be somewhere in the address, and all Tasty Cakes will be in that screen. Is, is that something that, since you're 
Yes, but we're not talking about products yet. We're talking about the whole category of products. But yes, it will do that for individual products. Right here, it's for all tasty cakes. But yes, uh, when we're doing individual products, the name of your, of your shop, slash shop, slash, you know, cookies, eight dozen, dot HTML, whatever. It will, it will take the title of the product and put it up on the address. Okay, so um, I won't do any parent or subcategories. Uh, description not prominent by default, however, some themes may show it. Remember, we had that option back on settings that said, Would you like to display description of your categories? So if a person does visit the address like I had here a moment ago, uh, shop slash category slash tasty cakes, on screen, whatever we write here could be visible. This is a spot where you can put some keywords and such for SEO, but I would write it in full sentences. So organic, Kate, uh, we'll say classic cakes with a modern twist, natural and organic ingredients. Just. Um, Putting something, advanced options. Would you like to attach a picture to the to the category? And remember, I mentioned that on the other screen to show it or not. These products are going to be in the default view. We can't choose the other views because we don't have the pro cart. If I want to override the size that I already had in the settings, I can change it here. If I want to override what I've already set in the settings about where I'm selling, I can change that here. When we were looking at the settings and there was a screen that had all of those checkout fields, uh, looking at that briefly under checkout, here's all of the fields that are being asked for when a person buys a product. I didn't mention it last time, but if you see here, we can create more than one set of things that will be filled in, that we will be collecting. So if we create different checkout fields, this is the default one, of course. Here then it says, for this particular category, which other one are we switching to? We don't have another checkout. We're using the same universal checkout, so it says none. Things are going to be billed uh, shipping based on the address uh, of shipping default. If you want to change that to, to the billing address, you could. So the only important thing at the moment, name of the category, little description, and click Add New. Go ahead and add on your own two or three more categories that would make sense to you or that would be fun to add. Um, for this store. I'm going to go with cookies and pies. And cupcakes. I won't add the um, description for the other ones, but you get the idea on that. So I've got the default product category. But individual ones, descriptions. These can be SEO optimized to some degree as well. When you uh, when you go back to edit, you get the Yoast box for you to optimize it a little bit more if you'd like. Each of these gets the slug, and under count, there are currently no products in a category. No products have been assigned to a category. A little bit of advice that I would say here on categories. Try to have your category structure set first. Then add tags if needed after adding products. 
I've simply found that if you already know you're selling this variety of products, how can I organize them? I'm selling these seven different products. How can I organize them into a category? So I would try to create categories first. Then as you add the product, as we'll do in a moment, and we figure out its description and all of that, we may then figure out tags that apply to it, and then we can add them secondly. I could say note a um, product can exist in uh, one or more categories and tags. So I can sell something in more than one category. In my, sen in my case, it won't make sense. A cupcake is going to be in cupcakes, not in cookies, not in pies. But for other products, I could easily see uh, one particular product existing in more than one category. And also note, we'll come back to this, um, categories and tags can be added to your menu. Right now I've got a menu of home, about, contact, shop. We can add to the menu categories and tags so people can easily see on the front end under shop a drop down of cookies, show me all cookies, or cupcakes. At the moment, all products will be under shop. All right, let's go to add a new product. Under add new product, you get a lot of little boxes to work with. Most of them should make sense. First of all, product title. Let's say birthday cake. And I'm going to make this a completely 12 inch, three layer. So, some description. In here you can put bullet points of the ingredients, you can put images and video, you can put all of this stuff to detail your product as much as you want. On the right side then I get product category, so I will select cakes category. Mm -hmm. Description, if you were listing like specifications for say a tennis so I would put it there, yes, if it makes sense, um, because that's those are more keywords that people can search to find you. We we have the ability. I took it off of the the site, but remember we have a widget where people can search. So when someone visits your site, they can search and look for 10-speed bike, and they could find that product. Or they could be on Google or Yahoo or Bing and search. And if you've got those keywords and text and such in the description, it's still part of that is this Yoast. So it would be a good idea to use it. Um, 12-inch, three-layer chocolate. It's up to you. I feel in the experience that I've had, you do want to go broader. Um, but you could have boys bikes, girls bikes, kids bikes, grown up grown up bikes. Those could be categories. Those could be those could be subcategories of bikes. So we have a lot of ways to organize. So here, just by uh, writing a little bit of description, three-layer chocolate, um, here's where I could then add a, a tag. Um, the details, remember? The big, broad idea category, the detail of this product, chocolate. Because think about it like this. I could sell chocolate cake and chocolate pie and chocolate chip cookies. All three of them are three different things, but they're all tied together with a tag of chocolate. That's one possible way to organize. So 
I could create a category of chocolate. This is again about like, well, what's the difference there? Chocolate or uh, tag and category. It's so similar. It's not wrong to make a category of chocolate and use it that way. I'm just showing different ways that it can be done. You can separate that all tags. All of these details are tags. All of the broad ideas are categories. Featured image. Go ahead and click Set Featured Image. We don't have any real images to work with, maybe. Uh, when we played with this a while ago under the Media Library, we have this. And none of these actually make sense to use. Now, I'll just pick one. The penguins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think kids would like a penguin on their cake. Set that. SEO issue. The featured image should be at least 200 by 200 to be picked up by Facebook and other social media sites. Well, that's the Yoast plugin recommending that. If your image is too small, it might not look very good um, on the social networks. But I think this is. Oh, yeah, I resized mine. <coughs> Let me put the koala instead. There it is. So see how it was blurry a moment ago. So I'm just going to go with that one. You get the Yoast box like we've seen before. You can play with that again. What's the keyword that people might search for? Does it, is it in my title? Is it in my description? How does it analyze it and help me? can look at that on your own. Scrolling down. OK, product pricing. Price and sale price. So just to pick any random numbers, 13, we'll do 12.99 for the price. If, I'm, if it's on sale today of 10.99, OK, great, I'll put that. And on the, on the front end of the site, it'll show the product, and it'll show the original and the sale price. I'll just keep it with the basic price. There's no sale on this at the moment. And no, it, it doesn't have a built-in way to set, well, the sale price will only last two days. With further plugins, you can get those extra features out of the box. Like I said, the, the reason I'm showing both of these plugins, even though WooCommerce is a lot more of the famous one, WooCommerce a lot of times has a lot of setup to do. This one's much more straightforward, and for some of us, this is all we need. I don't need to be fancy with how long does the sale last? And do I need to send out an email blast to a new customer and all of that? For all that much more power, you uh, often go over to WooCommerce. Then we'll look at WooCommerce as well. Yeah. Did WooCommerce also have, for example, a, a form that's going to be based on size, different prices? Or would you have to enter this each size as a separate? You know what? Uh, that is what is known as a variation, and that is doable in this plugin too, and we will look at that. So different versions of the product. We'll look at that. Currency. Do we want to sell this in different currencies? If you want. Is there a quantity discount? If you want, buy three of them, then get them each for $10. I don't know. You can set whatever you want. Uh, as many of those. OK, buy. Uh, nine of them, and then they go down to eight. I, it, I'm not thinking at the moment. <laughs> Whatever makes sense to gouge the, I mean, to do a good price on the product. Three for ten, yeah, that's a big, you're giving it away. So if you make a mistake, you just remove it, easy. Is this a donation? So turning that on will set it up that it's not an actual product, it's a donation. So here's one way that you can use this e-commerce as for donations. You would still add a picture, add a price, put the name, add the description, and then this is a donation. Stock, stock keeping unit, the SKU, the SKU, this is completely optional. This is for your own record keeping in my database, in QuickBooks or Excel or whatever. I've got a list of all of my products, and they're uh, numbered a certain way. And I want to link this product on my website with the actual item in the warehouse. So this is just completely, um, you know, if I have C dash C dash zero one, I know that in my inventory system, the first C means cake. 
and the second C means chocolate, and the third value means which variation of the cake, you know, 12 inch versus um, 15 inch cake. So that's completely optional, you don't have to put anything there, things will work just fine, but that's based on if you have any skew, any stock keeping units, any special code numbers for your products. Limited stock. Okay, I've only got five of these cakes to sell. Will I get an email once it reduces down to zero? <laughs> I'll get an email when there's only two left. Um, and if the product is reduced to zero, it'll still be visible on screen showing sold out. If I don't want that, I can unpublish it. One possible reason why you might not want to unpublish it is just to show people what they've missed. It's just to show people, come back. They're, this might come back in stock. Um, you could, when, it's, when it sells out, when you know it's sold out, you would have to manually come back to your product and say, you know, we will restock in two weeks. Uh, that is not automatic. That's some sort of special message happens when it goes out of stock. Uh, you have to manually when the stock runs out. But we can bake a cake, you know, every day. So I'm not going to put that there's any limited stock on that. But that's how that would be used if you do have a limited amount of something. This is going to get taxed in the normal way. If I don't want it to be taxed, there it is, exemption. If I want this to be tax, taxed in a more specific way than everything else, I would need to put it in a band. We never set up bands. Remember, a band is these certain products will be taxed this way, differently from everything else. So too complex, we're not going to do it. Uh, but that's a little bit on taxes there. I never set up a tax band. You might have been you might have set one up when you when you were under that screen settings store and then under taxes right here. I did not create any extra tax bands. I just used the country general ones. I didn't create specific bands. Okay, variations, we'll come back to that one in a moment, but that's if, if I wanted to sell cookies in batches of one, three, six, or a hundred. We'll come back to that. This would also apply like if I'm selling t-shirts, uh, small, medium, large, those are variations. We'll come back to that. Product delivery, okay, shipping. Product will not be shipped to customer, so it's a virtual product, it's a service, it's a donation. If we're doing uh, weight rate, when I said when things are more than X pounds, you get charged a certain way. Well, I have to put in here that this cake weighs, I don't know how much does a cake weigh? Three pounds? So putting some value. If we're going with flat rates, we can override those here or use the default that we had on the other screen. If we're also dealing with um, shipping based on dimensions and such, here we have dimensions. Putting nothing here should use the defaults that we set under the settings screen. Yes. If you change any of this, this will take over what we set under the settings, the store settings. OK, download. This doesn't apply to most of us. But if you are selling some sort of virtual product, if you're selling music files, video files, if I'm selling digital PDF cookbooks, it's right here. I would add files. Or I would uh, I would select a file that already exists, or I would uh, upload a brand new file, and I can add more than one. And so when someone buys this product, uh, there will be a, there will be a link attached so that they can download this product. 
once the credit card happens, transaction happens, they'll be able to download their product. External. Uh, this one's also uncommon, but let's say you've got some products that you're selling on Amazon or Etsy or um, eBay. You put the link to the product under URL and put some text. So you'll sort of preview your product on your site, but to actually buy, you're going to guide people to some other address, some other shopping cart somewhere, and they will buy it there. So in a real-world example, I had a client that was an author, and uh, some of the books that they were selling, you know, they had them in boxes in their garage, and others were uh, e-books on Kindle. So for their case, we had to put their address there. Amazon.com slash Kindle slash my book, whatever. And then get it on Amazon. So you don't have, you wouldn't actually buy the product on his site. You would click the button and it would take them over to Amazon and that's where they'd buy it on Amazon. This will supersede anything you write over here. It's going to ignore um, if you have it at a different price on Amazon, whatever you write here is going to be ignored because it'll take you to Amazon. I don't want any of that, so I'll remove it. Will be within my site here. Okay, so we've got image gallery. Here's a spot where you can uh, set more pictures. See, these are turning on, turning off. You can add more pictures in a sort of like a little gallery, a simple sort of group of thumbnails, more pictures added to this particular product. And question on that, if when you're building the site, you're putting a lot of assets in there, does that slow your site down if you don't get rid of the ones that you're not using? Um, it depends on what it is. Like when we talk about plugins and themes, yes, because plugins and themes have to check back to the mothership, is there a new update? Is there a new update? But if you put in 50 pictures into your site, that wouldn't quite slow down your site. Uh, having content on your site slows the site down when people try to access it. So if they've got ten, if you've got ten pictures on one product, then that'll be slower because all ten pictures have to download when the person wants to view this product. That's why you want to update. Uh, that's why you want to optimize all of your pictures and content to just what you need. What could also slow down is you've got fifty pictures on your site that you're not using, but when you go to duplicate it to make the backup, it's going to back up everything, including those pictures you're not using. And that slows down. Well, the problem is that some people have fast internet connections, and some people have slow, and some people are out of out of range, and their cell phone is bad. It's a lot more complex nowadays with such options. Back when we were using dial-up, and if you had dial-up, everyone had you know 56k because that was the most fastest one. So uh, there's no real answer to really give about what's the best. But just to reiterate, I would try to keep uh, so optimized images, um, dimensions. I would try to keep it to 1920 pixels at longest and file size under, I forgot exactly if I said 300 or 500, but either would be good, 300 kilobytes. Yeah. Well, I can't say that. If you've got 10 images, 10 times 300, Three megabytes. If I've got two images, then it's under my limit. So I can't say make sure your whole page is under five megabytes because I need to show ten pictures. Either I will not show those pictures or compress them so much they don't look good. So it's dependent on what you want to show on screen. But I can't say make sure your whole page is only X size. 
it's dependent on the server yeah sometimes when you buy the more affordable um, server bundles from Bluehost or GoDaddy or whatever they also are a little bit slower to transfer the data from your website to the person's computer so we'll, we'll cover that of course also but that's a consideration yeah video uh, uh, is going to be completely different that uh, is such a you know you're not going to get any video that's that small it's going to be multi megabytes, but video is different because it's it gets downloaded in chunks, whereas photos, basically the whole thing has to download before it's visible. Basically, video it it sends you like pieces at a time behind the scenes, and then you watch it and you don't even notice that it's sending you pieces. So that's a different animal. But I would still say dimensions of nineteen twenty because that's HD quality, and no one wants to watch anything less than HD quality nowadays. When you said um, per page, would you put different portfolios on separate and distinct pages? I would put it in different pages. Yeah, because then if you've got 10 images for black and white images and 10 images for uh, portrait images and they're all in the same page, well, that's 20 images that needs to download. It would behoove you to separate them by different kinds of photos into different pages so that the person interested in portraits Goes look goes to look at portraits and only waits for those images and not the ones they didn't care to see. Actually, sorry to drill down on this side. Mm -hmm. As an artist, if you are putting a smaller image at a really highly optimized low level, and if they're interested, click it, then it gives them a much greater quality. Is that a different page, or is that a subcategory on the page? That is the whole built-in system that it automatically makes thumbnails and such. You would still be uploading, ultimately, that would be the largest quality size. Okay. And WordPress oh, would make the thumbnail sizes okay. for you, and then when they click, they'll see the big one. <clears throat> yeah. Now that we've created a category, where does it live? Is it its own web page? It is its own web page, but it might not be visible right away. And uh, we will add uh, those eventually to our menus. That's where you can then definitely show them. They do exist, but they might not appear until you actually show them in a menu. Let's see. And then, uh, what about does it, how do you name its URL? It'll do it for you. When you created a category, the URL will come from the slug. So when you write something here, slug will fill itself in. In this case, cakes is simply the slug of cakes. So it'll be something like victorsbakery.com slash category slash cakes. It depends on the individual category. Short description is optional, handcrafted, and based on your theme. Some themes may show this short description or not at the top, the left, somewhere, somewhere. So just to figure it out on this theme, this is the short description. I don't know what it's going to look like. I do because I've taught this class for a while, but you don't know what this looks like. Uh, so this is how you would kind of reverse engineer this or troubleshoot it or or become a sleuth. What will this actually look like? Well, I don't know. I'll, I'll try it. I'll save it, and I'll view it. I don't like what it looks like. I'll remove it. I do what it looks. I do like how it looks like, so I will then use it. I'm just kind of putting a little placeholder there, and wherever I see this text appear when I visit site, well, I'll, I'll know that's where the short description is. And I believe this can only be text. I don't believe it can be any code, but um, we can check it. Curious, I don't remember that. You don't have to write this, but I'm going to write a little bit of code here. If you'd like to, you can write this. Let's see if that code will be processed. Uh, okay, what else? Personalization. Completely optional, but it might make sense for us here. Users can personalize this product by leaving a message. Well, I would like for them to be able to write, the person would most likely want to write the child's name on the birthday cake. So that's how you do that. 
you turn that on and the person will be able to add a message put this on the cake please you can even do this that you can have it that the person can upload a picture because nowadays you can get anything on the anything on the cake right and e even like a photorealistic image on cakes if you haven't seen those so people can upload um, a picture there that gets you into liabilities however because then someone's gonna upload a picture of Spongebob and they don't own the copyright to that and someone's gonna be liable for damages so you have to cover yourself here by if you do allow people to upload something you have to put or you I would recommend for you to put something in the notes over here that says if you upload an image it must be an image that you own the copyright to or say something like copyright images will not be accepted and will be replaced with a generic smiley face so you have to put some sort of note here if you allow now you can also say here where it, li it says leave a note, maybe you want to put uh, obscenities will not be added to your cake. But then we get to, but then but then we get to free speech and all that. So whatever you want here, metadata. Don't worry about this. This is pretty complex uh, to connect to advanced features of the shopping cart. And then lastly. Are we allowing people to comment on that product, yes or no? Because we set a, a little while ago, two sessions ago, under discussion, remember back under settings discussion, we had the option, or I left the option over here, allow people to post comments. And also set it to, um, before a comment appears, comment must be approved. I set those in the main settings and then right here we can also override it are we allowing people to comment yes or no and if we leave it to yes uh, I, I, I will get a notification that there's a new comment to approve it'll appear under discussion over here uh, where's oh comments it'll appear under comments and then I can approve them or not like feedback to the product yeah, the first one was under settings general settings discussion yes that often happens uh, individual specific settings will override global settings Well, it's a chicken or the egg sort of thing. What do I have in global settings will then um, affect what is here. If I turn it off here, allow comments, I've turned off the ability to allow comments, even though in the global settings I had on the ability to allow comments. If I had off the ability in global, allow do not allow comments, and I turn it on here, it will allow comments. They're both on at the moment, so. That's right. Only this product of birthday cake that we're working with. Now one minor thing, I, I mentioned it before and I would recommend it. You may notice that I have different tabs open because I might need to switch to different screens. That's a bit of a power user's move and I would recommend you do that instead of switching the same screen. Remember you can always right click, open new tab or new window and that way you can have different views at the same time. And with a nice big monitor you can pull a tab separately and then have it visible on the side and have it visible on the side, two things at once. So right click and just about any link and then new window or new tab. All right, so I think I'm ready to publish this product at the very top right corner, click publish.
We'll do that in a moment. I've added, yeah. Uh, you can preview it. Uh, I already clicked publish, but uh, yeah, it's often a good idea perhaps to preview it, see how it looks like. Uh, it's not so complex at the moment, so I'll just do publish. Let's publish and then let's go to visit site. And finally, let's see how a product looks in my site. Mm -hmm. So if you click on shop, the default view of things. There's the 148 pixel sized thumbnail. Um, there's the description shows up here. More details. Well, that's the short description. And it looks like it does render code. I wrote a little bit of CSS and HTML code to do a red highlight there. It looks like if you do put some HTML code in the short description, it'll turn it into code. I see a quantity box, price, shipping. I see an edit button, but that's only because I'm logged into the store. If a regular customer were visiting, they would not be able to edit my product. Average customer rating, how much do I like it? I'm going to give it a perfect five stars. You can click on the thumbnail get a preview of it. There's the, um, remember this color box and thick box. If you click on the title of the product, it goes over to the full page view of your product, depending on your theme. On this theme, it shows the picture twice, kind of weird. But again, this theme perhaps is not optimized for e-commerce. But you see when I clicked on shop, the address, the URL, is the name of the shop, victorsbakery.com slash products page. That was the name of the actual page to display products. When you click on a product, in this case, it goes to victorsbakery.com slash products page slash cakes, because this is in the cakes category, slash birthday cake. The, the slug of that has become the name of the product, lowercase with dashes. And so that product exists on that URL, that permalink, that address, accessible with that link. Yeah. Yes and no. Victor's Bakery? You should. Let me just see what you're saying. be obvious for people to see the full product so let's do this where it will make it a little more obvious um, we can add um, to the to the description we can add view more because by clicking the name of the product that will view more that product we can explicitly have a button that says view more uh, to read more about the product. So the way we'll do that is we need to go back to edit that product. There's a bunch of ways to do it. Here's perhaps a very direct way. Click on the product, the name, and then click on edit product. You will be able to find it of course by going back to the dashboard, going to your products, going to edit a particular product. 
or when you're looking at a product or a page or a post you should see edit page edit post edit product edit I want it to show perhaps only a little bit of a preview text and then read more so let's say after my first line of text press enter to have an empty space and we have an icon right here. What does that icon look like to you before you hover over it to tell you? What does it look like? Like what? Hamburger? Sure. I look at it as a uh, the stripe. A hamburger? I look at it like the stripe in the middle of the road. Yeah. It's supposed to be two pieces of paper cut in half because it then says insert read more. Or it could look like, you know, two, two pieces of sourdough bread, and then in the middle is the patty melt. Sure. But the point here is that where you want it to be read more or view more, I made an empty spot here, and then I'm going to click that icon, and it will create a little bit of code here uh, so that automatically once we uh, update it, and the person looks at the product, there will be a little more of an obvious of read more. Instead of not figuring out to click on the title of the product, there will be a read more to go view the full, pic the pi the full picture, the full product completely. This part right here will be hidden until they click view more. This one right here? No, it's supposed to look like two pieces of paper and then it's cut in between because you're going to go from one paper to another. Oh, but I will look. Okay. What's that? That's a little yeah, the, it, it's an open to interpretation. Like I said, for me, it looks like stripes in the middle of the road. Go ahead and do update visit site. Go look at that. Uh, go look at your shop. Uh, go look at your store again. Visit site. Back to the shop. Now the difference here is, okay, got the name of the product, the picture, preview, a little bit of text beforehand, read the rest of the century. Uh, no, there isn't a direct way to make that say something else unless you go to the code to change that. The short description is there still, that's fine. I can add to cart directly here if I want, or if I read the rest of this entry, then it shows me the full version, the big picture, the preview picture, what I wrote here, the rest of what was after, read more. The short description starts there. Here's where they can personalize. Please add Johnny Smith as the name. Upload a file. I'm going to upload that photo of SpongeBob to be added to the cake. How many? Price shipping. Add to cart. So it was added to the cart to actually see the cart. Well, we didn't put it in a widget anywhere, but we have the shop menu checkout. That can be renamed to be called something else, but it's checkout. Question. Okay, uh, we're going to take a break in just a moment, so I'll, I'll check that in just a moment. But if I go to checkout, there it is there. I've got one particular product so far. Birthday cake. Actually, I want two of them. I forgot he had a twin, so I'll do update. And uh, okay, individual prices is $12.99, two of them then $25.98. Shipping, if I've got shipping and all of that set up, okay, Mexico, um, calculate it there, taxes, shipping, etc., and then here's the part about filling in the person's billing and shipping and all of that, payment type, credit cards accepted, via PayPal or the test, or I can't proceed until I agree to the terms, and that is clickable for them to read it. So, Victor, mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. you're on your front end right now, right? Yes. And although I see like that 
toolbar up there that says edit page and everything, you're allowed to play around with this. Can you purchase from this, like from this WordPress? Thing? You can purchase. You you. Like, does not your customers aren't going to see all this? They're not going to see any of this because right. this is not on a real live server. The, no one will be able to go to the screen unless they're sitting at your computer, where WAMP is at. So remember, this is not live on the internet yet. If it was on actual victorsbakery.com, people could go here. And if I were logged in, victorsbakery.com, I would see this menu on top here. But just to jump to a different browser, just to simulate it, if a person was not logged in as the admin looking at that particular product, well, there's nothing in the cart yet. But if I add that product, add to cart, Go to checkout. Looks very similar to what I have as the admin, but no bar at the top right. about edit. As for actually purchasing it, uh, I believe it still could. If you wanted to test it from WAMP, I believe you still would be able to fully test it because um, after we fill in all of this information, it doesn't ask for credit card information here. It'll ask for it after we purchase, and then it'll jump us over to PayPal a screen at paypal.com on the real internet where people put in their credit card or log in with a real account click buy and then all of that happens on paypal site that's done and it'll send us back to our our site as admin if i buy it right now when i'm not admin it should take me back as not admin but if I try as testing it as admin, yes, it should bring me back as admin. So just to make the note to remind you. Um, so let's say here, um, steps. I want a user visits your site. They find your product. Add to cart. Let's say checkout. Checkout. Then what happens in, in here is um, they input their um, home and shipping, uh, billing and shipping addresses. Click purchase. Sent to PayPal.com. They purchase there. They are secure there. Sent back to your site after purchase. Back on your site. Uh, thank you message. So there's a little detour to go over to PayPal.com after they click purchase in the checkout screen where the security activates. Right now my site is not secure. So in theory, the credit card information could be stolen. Uh, but no, we're safe because when you click purchase, it, uh, get, they get sent over to PayPal where the security turns on and such. It's a lot, a lot safer. They finish their purchase, they come back to your site. Now what is in possible danger is they input their billing and shipping address. That stuff is getting saved to your site, to your database. Um, it is on your server, whatever you've asked to collect over on the store settings. Checkout. All of these things that we've asked here. First name, last name, address, city, state, zip, phone, email. We might not need to ask for phone or email or, or, or whatever, but all of the things we ask for. And if we added, what's your Facebook address? What's your Twitter address? All of that, we're collecting it in our database on our server, if we were on a real server. And we're responsible for that, and that's still another case for thinking about purchasing, uh, investing in the SSL certificate. All right, so uh, let's take our second break, and we'll uh, talk about coupons and variations uh, in 10 minutes. So we'll be back at 8.35. Yeah, I'll be right there.